Shalom. I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim HaMashiach, Yahushai, Ba'ashim Rakakadash. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, HaMashiach, Yahushai being the name of the only begotten Son of the Heavenly Father, the Lord and Savior of the children of Israel, which are being called today so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, but according to biblical prophecy, they truly indeed are the Hebrews light to the Bible. I'd like to give double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, GMS, and salutations to the whole full like brethren out there pushing the word in sincerity and in truth, resting their lives and their freedom to do so. And of course, to those men, I would like to say Shalom, wa barakim al thumb. Peace and blessings upon you and the Holy Spirit, the Rahakadash. And here I wanted to go into a quick lesson going into how women are not supposed to teach and are not supposed to usurp authority over men. And this is basically a response video to one of the Shariam and the camp, uh, the video that he had made this week going into how women are not supposed to teach doctrine, which is rightly so, man. Women are not supposed to teach according to the scriptures. And it's crazy because they claim they read out of the Bible, but don't follow the guidelines that the Bible has set for us. All right. So I just wanted to grab a couple of scriptures and an example of how women are not supposed to teach in the church. So with that, I hope you brothers out there be edified and I'm going to get straight into it. And this is the book of First Timothy, chapter two, verse nine. And it says, and like manner also that women endure themselves in modest apparel. So women are supposed to have on modest apparel. They're not supposed to be walking the streets like hoes, man, like harlots, like prostitutes. They're not supposed to do that. All right. The daughters of Zion were supposed to dress in modest apparel. But this world is ass backwards and a hey, look and behold the fruits thereof, man. So it says what? That woman adorn themselves in modest apparel with shame face and, cyber and sobriety, which the sobriety that is talking about what is talking about being sober in your mind. All right. They're supposed to be shame faced and sober in their mind. Not taking on the philosophies and the, and the ideology, especially of Esau, Edom. All right? But they were supposed to be sober minded, not with, bro not with uh, broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. And it says what? Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. And what does that mean? To be plain? As this woman, they supposed to shut their damn mouth, man. If they was going to learn, they were supposed to learn in silence and all subjection. Subjection under who? Subjection under their man. Not everybody, okay? Their man. That's how a woman was supposed to learn. But I suffer not a woman, says what? The topic of the video. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence because a woman teaching it automatically comes with authority. Why? Because you claiming that you know more than that man. When a woman was supposed to be humble, was supposed to be shamefaced. And this is why the scripture says, what I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence because believe it or not, contrary to this world, contrary to popular belief, a woman is automatically under a man. Automatically. All right. Let me keep reading. Verse 13. It's, it's going to explain why I say a woman is automatically under a man. Verse 13. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. All right. So a man is above the woman and the woman beneath a man. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. And if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with cyber with sobriety, which like I said before, that sober uh that sobriety or that soberness goes into what? The soberness of your mind. But if she was gonna be saved, it was gonna be in childbearing. All right. Bring it forth seed from her husband. All right. That's how she was gonna be saved. This is the book is uh this is the book of Titus right this is the book of titus chapter 2 verse 4 and it says i'm gonna start at i'm gonna start at 3 
the aged woman likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh, uh, becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given too much wine, teachers of good things. Now, a woman, a woman can't teach. All right. A woman can teach, but she's supposed to be of she has to be of age. All right. She has to be an older woman and she's supposed to teach what? Not men, but what? The younger woman. Right. It's going to say it. the age woman, likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things that they may teach the young woman to be what? To be sober and love their husbands, to love their children. So a woman's not supposed to be going into the heavy prophecies, the heavy, dark mysteries and secrets of the scriptures. Leave that to the man. The scripture says, what if a woman is supposed to teach? She's supposed to teach what? Being sober, to love their husbands, which is not being done in this world without a shadow of a doubt. But they're supposed to teach to love their husbands and to love their children. To be discreet, chaste, keepers at homes. Now, what woman is teaching that to be a keeper at home? A lot of these women out here in, in, in the club, <laughs> you know, to be all the way real. But this is what the older age woman is supposed to teach. That they may teach the young woman to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands. That the word of the Most High be not blasphemy. All right. Be not blasphemy. And that's what the woman is supposed to teach if they do teach in anything. All right. Not going into deep, dark mysteries of the scriptures, teaching men. All right. That's going off according to the scriptures. And what makes this so powerful, this is not even Old Testament. This is in the New Testament that they claim that they believe in so heavily. All right. Now I want to grab an example of what the, the Lord and Savior all right, of the children of Israel, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, had to say about a woman that tried to teach the church a thigh terror. All right. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 20. All right. And I'm going to go into... The text commentary of uh, explaining the scripture, okay? Because I like what the person had to say. But I'm going to start at verse 18. Verse, uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse 18. And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira. Actually, let me look up what Thyatira uh, means. Uh, Thyatira. Thyatira means odor of affliction. A colony of Macedonian Greeks situated from Sardis and Pergamus, Pergamos on the river Lycus. Its inhabited gained their living by traffic in the art of dyeing in purple, which purple was a was a was a color of royalty. You could sell um, purple garments and purple uh, linen for the price of gold back in the ancient world because it was a rare color to find in nature. All right. But that's what Thyatira means. It means the odor of affliction. All right. Now, this is the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 18. And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira write, These things say, saith the son, of, uh, the son of the Most High, who hath in his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet like fine brass. All right. Because the Lord was a dark-skinned man. And it tells you in Revelation of the first chapter that that brass was burnt in a furnace. No, showing you that what? Um, that the Lord was a dark-skinned man. Right? Verse 19. And I know thy works in charity and service and faith and thy patience. Speaking about the church. He knows the works, charity, service, faith, and patience in thy works. And the last to be more than the first. All right? And it says, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou suffers that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, which fornication by definition is adultery. OK, by biblical definition, fornication is adultery. And there was a woman in the church of Thyatira seducing men to do these things. Number one, to prevent this, the, the, the number one thing that could have prevented this is what women not supposed to teach in the first fucking place. All right. Excuse my French. All right. But 
but she committed men to commit fornication and to eat those things sacrifice and to idols. Now, I want to go into the text commentary to see what this person had to say, because, it was, you know, I was reading and it was pretty good. My bad. Wrong one. I'm going to jump down all the way to verse 20. All right. It says right here, Revelations 2, 20 through 21. And it says what Yahweh Shai had, uh, has against the church of Thyatira. All right. And it says what? Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. This is what Revelation 2 and 20 says. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel, which call herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality, which, you know, is adultery. All right. Because that's what fornication is. And to eat things uh, sacrificed to idols and gave her time to repent of her fornication. And she did not repent. And it says right here, nevertheless, means what despite all the good Yahweh saw in the church of Thyatira there were significant problems the problem was big enough for Yahweh to say nevertheless which means despite all the good I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel is going to say what that woman was the center of the corruption of the church listen to this it says the center of the corruption at the church of Thyatira was a woman <laughs> trying to teach it was a woman trying to teach men. It was the sin of the corruption of the church of Thyatira. It says, was a woman, Yahweh Shai called Jezebel. This may not have been the her literal name, but a title that clearly represented a self-styled prophetess within the church. After the after the pattern of Jezebel in the Old Testament. Now, in order to understand how wicked. Jezebel was in the Old Testament. Just read First Kings chapter sixteen through twenty one and Second Kings, uh, the ninth chapter, verses thirty through thirty seven. It tells you the wickedness of Jezebel, how she had men go off, had had the men of the nation of Israel worshiping false gods. Which Jezebel, she was a Zidonian woman. Okay, she was a Hamite. But the Yahweh Shai gave this woman of the church that title because she was committing basically the same wickedness. I'm going to keep reading. The name Jezebel had a powerful association. If we call someone a Judas or a Hitler, it means something strong. It was also a strong thing to call this woman Jezebel. She was one of the most evil characters of the Old Testament who committed, who attempted to combine the worship of Israel with the worship of the idol Baal. Jezebel herself had a most in Un unavailable, unavailable record of evil. Shalak, if I pronounced that word wrong. All right. But that was going on. That was going on in the uh, Shalak. That was that was <laughs> that was happening in the church of Thyatira. All right. Women trying to teach, man. But the scripture says, well, I'm going to go back to first Corinthians chapter. Chapter two, I mean, first Corinthians, chapter two, verse 12. And it says, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor usurp authority over a man, but to be in silence. All right. And that was just a, uh, the center of corruption in the church of Thyatira. Women trying to teach. Same thing was going on in the world now. Women trying to teach men. It's the center of corruption, man. All right. And that was the Lord Yahweh Shai speaking. All right. Which a lot of these women claim that the Lord is their husband and all that stuff. Well, what did just what did your so-called husband have to say? He said, "What? Let the woman not teach and not usurp authority over a man." All right, and that's in the scriptures, man. That's all. This is all New Testament. All right. So that was just a quick response video, quick lesson going into how women's not supposed to teach, man. All right. So with that, I believe I grabbed everything I wanted to touch on. All right. Yeah, I believe so. All right. So with that, I'm gonna close out. I hope you brothers out there was edified. I like to give all praises to Yahweh, by Hashem Mashiach Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakadash, double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone GMS, and uh, Shalom to the hopeful elect out there. All right.